Hey, it's Joel. Form Next 2025, and we're at the Fiber Seek booth, and this is my buddy Ryan. Hey, Joe. Thanks for coming. Big fan. Well, thanks, Ryan. So, Ryan is CEO of Fiber Seek, a company that is bringing affordable, continuous, continuous fiber. carbon fiber. Continuous fiber, because it's not just carbon. Yeah, it right? could be ending continuous fiber. Continuous fiber to the people. I have experience with Markforge machines, oh, right. and I've yeah. printed continuous carbon yeah. fiber before, but the machine I had was A, really expensive, and B, a lot of manual process was involved, but you seem to have solved both of those things with the fiber seat. Take me through the development of this machine, because what I see looks very much like a finished product. I know it's not, but it's very close, correct? Yeah, so we're already uh, freeze up the design, so we're ramping up the production. So the Kickstarter is already live, and we are going to be shipping them since like February uh, 2026. Really? So once the Kickstarter is over, you're going to be shipping yeah, them? Yeah, okay. we're going to be shipping. Well, then let's talk about the Fiber Seek machine. What's the build volume you've got on this? So it's a 300 by 300 by like 245. Wow. So and we try to be as big as we could on the development for this price point for like, you know, both engineers and some of the makers wanted to build like strong, you know, functional stuff. You could do PLA at all, but we're talking about polycarbonate and nylons, correct? Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you have a separate head laying down that continuous fiber. Yeah. And how did you how did you come about wanting to do this? So before we worked with a company, an isoprene, and then actually, so we were in this B2B business, quite expensive machinery, and you know, just through the years, I've had like conversation with so many you know, engineers, like talented engineers. And so many of them want this like tech, both for their work, for like to, you know, developing some engineering parts and also for like maybe their free time. But most of them could not get it because of like both machines, you know, of Markforge and Ice are so expensive in terms of the machine and also the material. Yeah, well, they can't, so, they couldn't, every engineer no. couldn't have one at their desk. No. No, it's just too expensive. And if they wanted to apply, their bosses would not like approve, right? Of course not. Absolutely not. So I want, always wanted, like since day one, to develop a system that every engineer or like makers could afford. So I think who doesn't want strong parts? Oh, everybody wants strong parts. Because yeah. I am myself, I'm like like car person, karting person. I always want to print parts from a karting to you know customize it. Yeah. And you're not gonna do it with PLA or like even like PACF it doesn't work. Right. You no, I, have, you, like, you get close, yeah. but again, you're you're missing a very specific element to right. your part and that's going to be that fiber so load when talk about like strong parts it, you people automatically assume metal right but of between course. metal and then plastic there is actually composite right composite carbon fiber so mm -hmm. if we can print them on the desk it is you don't have to mess up with like metal powder stuff and it's as strong as metal let's just approach composite parts using chopped fibers because that's something that is very synonymous within the consumer 3d printing industry yeah, yeah. PLA, PETG, ASA, ABS. Yeah, I have the chop. Yeah, you've got chopped yeah, yeah. fiber parts, right? Yeah, yeah. And it gives a really cool surface finish, but it doesn't. It doesn't give you the strength. Yeah, it's like I always use this joke like, it's like bones to your body, but if you chop your bones, you're not going to stand here. <laughs> you want the bones to be continuous, right? To be of complete, course. like continuous fiber. It's the same concept. Now, in, in doing continuous fiber, the reason Mark Forge was doing it uh, was uh, they kind of had a stranglehold on that. Was there a patent to get around or was there just a process you had to implement in order to make it affordable? So, uh, so there's a technology you mentioned and there is a product design, so they're two like, separate things. So in terms of the technology to print continuous carbon fiber, they're actually different approaches. So we take a quite different approaches. We call it CFC and we have our own patented technology. So we pre-impregnate the carbon fiber with like resin. So which is, you can have like good bonding together with the, to put like raw fiber, which is like hair. Yeah. Right? You don't want to print your hair, right? It doesn't, it's not no, printable. Not. So you have to pre-treat the fiber. Like we call it pre-impregnation. Okay. And then, so then, but what we do is like the other company do it with thermoplastic, but we impregnate the fiber with resin, which is thermoset. And then in printing, we have extra fiber, uh, like plastics working as a glue, so you glue the, fiber, the resin oh. fiber to the uh, plastics to acting as a reinforcing yeah, material. So you get a really strong part when you're yeah, done. Yeah. It's strong and then on the other hand, it's like affordable because you're not locked up to one fiber, right? If you print with thermal plastic, like if you impregnate the fiber with nylon, and then with the base, you only print with nylon as a base. Yeah. Yeah, but for us, you can have unlimited matrix material because whatever you mix with this carbon fiber, that's your base, right? So you can reinforce on PLA, PETG, PA, 
Whatever you want, yeah. you can yeah. reinforce it with carbon fiber. You just have continuous fiber. Continuous in fiber. Machine. You just have to buy one same spool and then it works on all kinds of plastics. That's really cool. Like, that's really, really cool. And you're gonna be opening a lot of doors for people who want these strong sort of parts. One of the complexities of being able to do this, though, is within software, laying down the continuous carbon fiber paths to provide the best strength to weight ratio. And so is, is your software able to assist the user in laying that down? That's actually the hardest part in terms of developing the system. It's the software. Right, so you, it's not going to work as a regular FDM slicer because FDM's path plane is like move a glue gun, right? So you're not really restricted on however you move the print head. But with carbon fiber, you really want it to leak the fiber in the right speed, right angle, and you know, right trajectory. And that's a lot of mathematics. So we have to develop the algorithm right from the scratch. That's like 100 pages of like differential <laughs> equations. <laughs> You developed it, so your algorithm for laying down that continuous carbon fiber is... So we built it in-house, so we have wow. our own slicer. So if I put a part in the software, then will it compute proper pathways to... Do I, do I identify parts on the model that I want straight? No, yeah. So you just identify, like, so we try to make easy with fiber six. So it's like cooking your steak. You want to, like, rail, medium, like, medium well. It's like you can just pick in the software you want a medium strength, higher strength, or like a little ah, bit of strength. Okay. And then the software is gonna, according to your need, give you like a certain amount of fibers, right? So you want a higher strength, more fibers. You want a lower strength, less fibers. I see. Or the fibers that it takes. So is it? I'm, I'm guessing it's standard 1.75 millimeter FDM material. FDM, yeah. And then the fiber is what? It's like 0.3 millimeters. It's very thin strand. Okay with like a thousand microstrands of carbon fiber. That's why we call it XCCF1K. And it's only $49 per screw. Really? Yeah. This is really cool. Like the affordability isn't just in the hardware, but you're providing a fiber. Yeah, yeah. If you buy a fiber machine and then your material costs like hell, it's, that won't work. Nope. Okay, well, Ryan, tell me this. So as, as CEO, this is your baby. This is yeah, your dream. I'm the father. <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite part that you've made on this machine? Yes, I do. What is it? You gotta tell me. So I have this like drone. Oh, do you have it? Yeah, bring it yeah, over yeah. if you can bring it, sure. That's absolutely my favorite application and I think it's a killer app for like continuous fiber on like 3D printer. Well, you're gonna be giving a really high strength to weight ratio, right? Yeah, so and it's light and strong so, and you can fly them and you don't worry about like the fouls down because yeah, it's stiff and strong. May I hold it? Yeah, sure. The impregnated fiber also gives it a stiffness, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very stiff. Wow. Right, this is cool, man. Like, this is cool. How happy are you to see this coming about? Like, this must be wildly popular. Yeah, I'm like so happy to see like people are excited waiting for this machine to make your own drones. And like, I think a lot of people talk about that. I, I can't wait to make my own drones. Like, and also people can make like, I see like people work, want to make it like RC car parts. Oh, drones, yeah, RC, yeah, car, RC parts, car parts, brackets, yeah. jigs, yeah, yeah. car parts. Car parts. Car parts, motorcycle parts. Yeah, yeah, a space tag that's like, that's why this thing was invented for like space station parts. So one day we're gonna see a fiber seek orbiting the earth, providing parts for astronauts, right? Well, we already have worked with like a lot of organizations sending parts to the space. We have tons of experience. That's why our logo is a rocket, which means it's a space tag available for everyone. Ryan, this has been amazing. Um, I, I, I'm really excited to see this in people's hands because they're gonna create things that you and I both probably didn't even think of. This is a great killer application for this and all the other things that we mentioned. People are gonna to wanna to know more about FiberSeek, so look in the camera right there and just tell everybody where they can go to find out more. So guys, we just launched the FiberSeek 3 on Kickstarter yesterday and it's still alive for like next 40 days. So just type uh, FiberSeek 3 on Kickstarter and you'll find us on the page. and. You can look for more information. Hey, listen, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, and continuously carbon fiber print all the things. And as always, high five. You want one? Yeah. Yeah.